Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we are going to paint another one. Yes, you heard it right, another one landscape painting on a very mighty canvas. The size of the canvas is 24 by 36 and before I start the video, I would like to make you acquaint with this product called Happy G1 Anti-Stress by Herba Genomic Wellness and this product is effective in your fight against commonplace present day complications like stress and depression which have become an uh, inseparable part of our lives post pandemic and I would say this product is a one-stop solution in case you want to relieve yourself from headache, migraine and other kinds of mental fatigue. And in case you want to order this product, the links are in the description box. And here you can see my dirty palette, the other side of which I'm going to use today. I haven't cleaned it since last month. And the second thing that I would call a gift for my laziness uh, is uh, these brushes. I haven't cleaned them since last month as well. And I kept them immersed in paint thinner and this is the result. So first of all, we are going to paint the sky as you can see on your screen this is the first thing that we have to do the paint the sky and in the video attached down below on the right side of your screen you can see how you can paint the sky first of all you have to use thalo blue in the center of the uh, canvas and then add the prussian blue on the sides and this technique of adding prussian blue on the sides is followed in order to bring the eye towards the center of the painting and in case uh, the thalo blue is darker you can add titanium white to make it a little lighter and for the purpose of blending the two colors thalo blue and prussian blue you go right across the canvas and move from left to right and don't forget that you don't have to stop in the middle otherwise you'll ruin your sky and the second thing here is this mountain painted in black as you all are aware of uh, we being into wet and wet technique and for this purpose we have to first apply the midnight black and then paint the highlights over it and you can use any brush you want but you have to use midnight black in order to paint the base of this mountain and that's what i'm doing you can see in the video you can follow the exact same procedure in order to paint this mountain until you are going to get something like this and the third thing that you have to do is add that line of mountains at the back side and one thing that i would like to suggest you is that use very thin amount of uh, midnight black add a large amount of uh, paint thinner into your midnight black and then paint these mountains with a filbert or a flat brush and uh, well, the reason why you have to paint these uh, mountains light is that they stand very very far behind this uh, mountain that we have painted already and you are going to get something like this don't get confused for these lines I have just drawn them to clean my brush and no clouds today because the space of the clouds has been covered by that line of mountains and the next thing that you can see here is I have uh, applied the uh, titanium white at the front portion of these mountains and this can be done with any palette knife uh, I use this one because I love the control moment of the palette knife and this palette knife allows me a lot of control over it and you have to remember one thing that your touch needs to be gentle and the reason we are painting the titanium white on this side is that we have kept our light source on the left side of our painting now it's time to paint the shaded part like this one and for this purpose you have to use uh, titanium white and add a small amount of thalo blue into it and just employ the same technique load a small amount of this mixture of thalo blue and titanium white on your palette knife and just drag it gently downwards without applying any sort of pressure on your canvas and this is the reason that you can see the transition between the two colors and this color suggests that this part isn't receiving the sunlight directly onto its face. Now the fifth thing that you have to do is paint some mist with your stencil brush. Please check the video down below. You have to make those round circular strokes in order to paint the mist at the bottom of the line of mountains that stands at the back side. 
and uh, you need to do this step earlier because if you do it later on you can ruin the tops of the mountain standing at the front and then the sixth thing that we are going to do is use our brush and small amount of titanium white and paint the portions that we suppose are going to receive the light directly from our light source because if you are directly go for the palette knife uh, you may mix some color and it's good if you already uh, make this a little white until you get something like this and now an immediate step is painting the highlights over the white color that we already applied and for this purpose we have to use the palette knife again and you can see I'm barely touching the canvas and we had to create a sort of texture here of uh, broken titanium white let that paint break away and don't forget that you don't have to kill all the blacks apply a good deal of titanium white at the mountain top because that is the part that is supposed to receive a lot of snow and as we come down it fades away and it's about time to paint those shaded portions that you can see and here the technique is again the same one uh, by mixing the phthalo blue and titanium white and loading that paint on the top of your palette knife you just drag the paint downwards and remember one thing that you have to apply more paint on the top and lesser on the bottom and as you come down you fade this paint and uh, one thing that you also have to remember here is that don't do that brush thing for the shades because they appear good as long as the black color is much visible through them and right now we have to add the mist again at the bottom of the mountain at the front and for this purpose I'm using a large brush and first of all I'm just employing that uh, mixture of phthalo blue and titanium white that is already on my brush and I'm covering a large part with it and when I'm done with this I'm using uh, the same brush and loading a lot of titanium white on it and just tapping gently on the bottom and somewhere my taps are um, just breaking through the portion of snow and you can also do this in order to make it look realistic about time that we add the second layer of titanium white into the mist that we already painted at the foot of the mountain line that we uh, that stands at the back and you can uh, employ the titanium white pure titanium white for this purpose and the brushes that you are going to use could be filbert or flat and the next thing is painting these trees and as you can see in the video I'm just taking a small brush uh, loaded with midnight black and just moving randomly in any direction uh, but don't forget to make that triangular shape of the tree you must have a clear uh, vision of the tree in your head and this technique I'm also using for the first time and one more thing is that don't forget to paint that uh, sharp edges of the trees now we are into the process of painting this grass or metal whatever you want to say and for this purpose you have to use this uh, large flat brush and you just go right across the canvas tapping the sap green really hard into your fabric you can do this with a small one inch brush as well but don't forget to paint them a little slanting because we are going to add a small stream in there as well and you can repeat the process until you get something like this and there's uh, one more thing in order to make your painting look more realistic we are going to do one thing that we are going to add some more highlights as you can see the trees are standing and there are gaps between them the light is passing through these gaps and uh, right next to these gaps you are going to add a small amount of uh, Indian yellow just to paint that highlight on the right side you can see the light is falling and the top portion is much brighter than the bottom now it's time to paint this small stream and first of all you have to use midnight black and paint the basic shape where your stream is going to reside and then you add uh, phthalo blue with a small brush you have to cover all of it with phthalo blue or prussian blue whatever you want to use whatever the type of color you want for your stream to be and then you have to add titanium white into it 
Remember, I'm only going to show you the one addition of one layer with the titanium white. The water is falling here and the places where the water is stagnant. You can add subsequent layers to get this effect. And then we come at the bottom of our canvas. I'm sure you don't want to leave it as it is because it looks sort of empty. And that's the reason we are adding this small grass here. And for this purpose, I'm employing a liner brush and a very uh, liquid uh, kind of midnight black uh, with the addition of more paint thinner into it. And you have to do this for uh, the black colored grass and then you have to do the same thing uh, for the grass that is going to be painted with Indian yellow. Now we are back at our trees and we are adding the color uh, sap green into them and remember one thing that the technique is same you just have to load sap green on your brush and just move randomly in any direction you want and uh, for all the trees you have to employ the same technique and don't forget to paint uh, those boundaries of the trees sharper and you are going to get your tree is something like this one and I have also added some light trees in order to give the indication that they stand at the back and the final thing here is adding the highlights into our trees and for this purpose I'm again saying that you have to use Indian yellow because when it comes to highlights Indian yellow could be regarded as the best color for adding them and you only have to do it to the half of the tree because only the half is facing our light source that we have placed on the left side you can add the highlights in an identical way making the boundaries sharp and here's what you are going to get after you finish applying those highlights and we could call the painting finished. Here's the final picture of the painting. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, you can follow me on Instagram and you can follow my page on Facebook or add me personally on Facebook because I keep posting my art regularly on, the, on those places and all the links are given in the description. Thank you for being with me and thanks for watching the video.